here. And uh, it was for some, it had some kind of odd plug on it. Hi friends. So I just spent a little bit of time getting the refrigerator wired up. Um, so you know I had the cooler in this cabinet here. Now this cabinet has the feature that you can access it from both inside and outside the ambulance. I think a lot of them have the same type of cabinet. Um, what are you doing? What's up, Poppy? Scratching his back. So there was a 12 volt constant power supply in here. And uh, it was for some, it had some kind of odd plug on it. Excuse me, sir. Are you doing your yoga? Lefty. So I used that 12 volt source, it was a constant source. This is the plug from the refrigerator. Now, this originally had uh, like the cigarette lighter type plunger on the other end of it. And I could have put one of those. I had a, I had a leftover, but I was just afraid that that would pop out uh, during travel. So this is hardwired in. Um, I soldered the connections, heat shrink, and then Tessa tape over all the connections. I also put a 20 amp inline fuse uh, right behind that panel. Uh, and now I've put this, um, you know, this split loom, plastic loom uh, over the wire. So this should be um, really secure as far as elect electronics. So I have the refrigerator. Uh, this came yesterday. Uh, I unpacked it. The instructions say that you need to let it rest for six hours before you power it on. So I unpacked it and it's been sitting here um, about 20 hours at this point. So I think I'm good to go, to go ahead and put it in the cabinet and plug it in. So I'm super excited. Uh, hopefully I don't have to do the cooler and ice thing anymore because that was a real drag. the other way so that the lid is accessible. Imagine uh, coming back to the truck with groceries. You could load them right in, you know, open it this way from outside and load them right in. That just seems super convenient. And that puts the plug down at this end, which means that my wire only needed to be about six or eight inches long. Um, there we go. some type of um, strap system because there's so much room in here. I feel like I should have gotten a bigger one. <laughs> yeah. Not the greatest amount of room here, but you know, I could get some things in there. Oh, that also puts the control panel accessible. Otherwise, the control panel would have been down here, and I, you know, right there, I wouldn't have been able to read that. So, yeah, I think it makes more sense to have it this way. All right, it's time to plug it in. This thing plugged in. Now, I'll get this wire, and we're going to come down here.
flog. Oh, I do a lot of grunting when I'm when I'm working. I'm sure you guys hear that. So let me look at this. See if I can get a glimpse of what this plug looks like. Can you guys see? I can, I can feel it. So it goes this way. Uh, that's unfortunate. Oh, I heard it beep. Oh, let me push that on there a little harder. Okay, it's in there. Let's go check the control panel. Okay, I'm going to press the on off button on plus or minus for temperature. So does that sound? There we go. All right, well, I'm going to let this thing do its cooling. Got it set to 35. It's at 57 right now. Um, so I'm just going to let it uh, continue and see how long it takes to cool it down. All right, I'll check back in when we got some uh, results on this thing. So I'm gonna fast forward here and give you an update on the refrigerator because I've done some more kind of fitment and gotten it installed in here a lot more usable. So when I first installed it in the cabinet, it was really difficult to get the lid open, obviously. Uh, the cooler that I used to have in there was a little bit shorter and allowed me to open the lid and reach in and get things. and. Um, I used to slide the cooler out through the, the outside door there. But what I, what I ended up doing here was building a slide. Get some more light in here. So I ended up uh, building a slide, kind of a shelf here. I just went to, I think it was Home Depot and bought some, bought some of these uh, drawer slides and built, uh, built this shelf system. Uh, this was a leftover piece of plywood that um, one of my friends had from a project he was doing. Um, I took some L brackets that I had and kind of reshaped them. And I've got the, the cooler just tacked to this shelf. So, you can grab and just slide it out and that gives you full access to the lid. Okay, so I have full lid opening. What I had to do though, to, to allow this to slide in and out really easily, I had to remove the handle from this end. And then on this side, because the control panel is a part of the handle, you can see that the the control panel is built into the handle, I, I cut the handle. So this used to have a, a grab bar that, that came out like this. There was nothing inside of it, it was hollow. So I cut it, I took it off. Um, I've added these loops here that I had, one here, one here, bungee cord. And this holds it from the shifting back and forth because uh, it was moving when I was driving. Uh, if we, you know, if the truck would rock a little bit, I would come back here and the, the refrigerator had like kind of repositioned itself. So that wasn't good. So I did that on, on both ends. Uh, same loop system here. You can see a little better here on this side. Um, So loop system, loop, 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 
and a bungee cord holding it down. So it's, it doesn't move anymore. It stays in the position. These L brackets uh, really help. So they're, they're tacked in from the bottom down here with a screw. And then this was an existing screw for these corner uh, protectors. So I just um, passed the screw through the L bracket. So my, my 12 volt power supply, I have it secured right up under here with a, a cable holder and it's in this wire loom, the plastic wire loom. And so when the drawer goes in and out, uh, I, you know, I obviously I'm paying attention to it. I have the loom tacked to the wall back there. I believe you can see that. Um, so it's, it's flexible, but the wire itself is not getting abraded by anything because of the wire loom protection. So this thing slides in and out really easily. And then once, when I'm gonna travel, uh, I just added these just a couple days ago. I click these into position just to keep the drawer from sliding open because that happened once, it was a really rough ride. And I came back here and the refrigerator was um, partially slid out. So uh, th that, that is why I've added those two clips there. So the refrigerator itself, the unit, uh, it's working you know as designed i have no issues with it um the only the only one i guess complaint you could call it is the noise from the the motor and that fluctuates with i believe it has to do with you know how how warm or how cold it is in here and the rigidity of the plastic case because when it when it's making some noise you know it's a it's a you know, motor noise, kind of a rattling sound. You can come over here and just kind of touch your hand on here just lightly and it stops. So it's just harmonics and the case itself rattling. So I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna try putting a, a rubber pad underneath it because it, you can, you can kind of just touch anywhere when it is making a little bit of noise, you can kind of just touch anywhere and it stops. So if I can isolate it a little bit better, and there is enough room up here, I have a couple inches, so I could add, you know, a, a quarter inch rubber pad underneath it, put it back on and see if that helps out. So that's, that's the completed for now uh, install of the refrigerator and how it's gonna remain for the, you know, for the time being um, until I decide I need to make a change.